Here we go, section six, ladies and gentlemen. And in section six, what we're going to talk about is this, this video. Um, how do you use algebraic properties? We just did out, um, addition and subtraction, but this video is going to talk about the multiplication and the division properties and those two theorems that go along with it. So let's go do this. By the way, what you need to do is flip on your, flip on, <laughs> flip on your foldable flappy. Put out your foldable flappy there, and on your foldable flappy, um, what you need to write is on this part of the foldable multiplication property, right there. And again, put your finger on the words multiplication property and flip up everything else. And the examples that I put here in this video need to go into your foldable, and of course, the theorem that is the multiplication property. So here we go, and let's do this multiplication property. Okay, let's talk about this right now. Let's talk about the multiplication property and with this example of how it all kind of flies. So what you need to do is write this example in your foldable, so you probably got to pause it. But here's what's given to you. Segment AB, this little guy right there, is congruent to segment FG, right there, the one in the middle. The other thing that I'm giving to you is that points B and C, these guys here, points B and C, are trisection points of the bigger segment. So you got to think about what that means, if they're trisection points. And points F and G, ooh, sorry, it's not like I just said something bad there. But anyways, point F and point G, those two things are also trisection points of this bigger segment. Now, the question is down here at the bottom right, what could I conclude if this all is true? Well, let's come up with a simple example. Let's say AB is, I don't know, we'll make it six inches. Again, just coming up with it. If that's six inches, then guys, FG has to be 6 inches because they are congruent. That's what's given to me right here. Now, if I know B and point C trisect the bigger segment, that means if two points trisect a segment, it divides the bigger segment into three congruent segments. So my question would be, what could we conclude then about segment AD? What's the length of it? Well, all you would basically do is take 6 times 3 equal parts which would give you 18 inches. So this whole entire thing right there would be 18 inches. Now come over here to this one. If I know this little piece is 6 inches, but I know points F and G trisect it, that means it divides this entire segment into three congruent segments. Oh, that's pretty cool. So the argument would be that I can take this 6 inches and multiply it by three equal parts, which would give me 18 inches, which just so happens to be this segment length here from E to H. So what I've just showed you is that if you have two little segments like AB right here and FG congruent, if you have two little segments congruent on two different pictures or two different parts of a picture or two different parts of a diagram, but you know you have a multiplication thing happening here where you're concluding something bigger. So I started with this little guy AB, but I'm concluding the whole thing here from A down to D congruent the whole thing here from E the whole way down to H and again starting with something smaller. But I know the trisection means three equal parts. So anytime that that happens you can use this thing called the multiplication property to make it work. So if I have two segments that are congruent it actually says they're like multiples are congruent. And let me go down here too and show you an angle example. This should go in your foldable as well. So again you probably have to pause it but if I have all oh, this is like um, Santa Claus, Ray Ho, 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 Ho. So Ray Ho <laughs> and Ray Ra, sound like a cheerleader. Ray Ra, 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 Ray, Ray Ra. So Ray Ho and Ray Ra bisect the angle. They're angle bisectors. And notice here I also have given angle J, H, O is going to angle A, R, K. So the question is, what can my conclusion be? Well, it's the same argument. If I have these two angles right here that are congruent, I don't know, let's say that this is 50. If that angle is 50 degrees, that means JHO has to be 50 degrees because the two angles were given to me to be congruent. So, since I have two things in two different areas that are bisected, but they're starting with smaller equal parts, I would just take this thing right here, let me change colors, I would take this thing times two and give me the whole entire angle measure to be 100 degrees. Same thing over here, I would use multiplication times two because these are two equal angles and get the whole entire angle to be 100 degrees. So therefore, those two measures are the same. Therefore, those two angles, angle JHN would be congruent to angle MRK. That would be my conclusion. Your reason would be the wording 
of the multiplication property. So let me go back to the PowerPoint and you can write down what the multiplication property is and then we'll move on to division property. So here is your wording of the multiplication property. You can see on the, on the screen here, it's theorem 14. It says, if we have segments that are congruent, then they're like multiples are congruent. It's like the first example I just gave you. Or the second example, if I have little angles congruent, then I can conclude that they're bigger multiples are congruent. Because listen, 100 is a multiple of 50. And back to the segment example, 18 is a multiple of 6. So we have, or yeah, 6, six is a smaller thing, 18 is the bigger. So they're like multiples are congruent if we start with two congruent things. Okay? So that is the multiplication property. So now, let's go over and back to your foldable. And on this part of your flap, write division property. And let's talk about what the division property is. So put your finger on division property, fold up the little pieces at the very top of that, and let's dive over and get some examples for division property. So now in this one, we're going to talk about, again, examples that deal with division property. So on your foldable, let's write these examples. So it's the same picture as the last one, the multiplication property. Actually, let me click back. You'll see it's the same picture, except notice what's different. I'm giving you something different right here in pink. This is saying now, well, let's start. Forget the other stuff. Let's say this is a brand new picture where now what I know is this. I know that the whole way from A over here to D is congruent to E the whole way over here to H. Let's say I know that those things are given to me to congruent. I still have B, C the trisection points, F, G the trisection points. That's still the same. The question down here is again, what could I conclude? Well, let's make something up completely different. Let's say that this right here is, I don't know, we'll make it... Um, 33 yards. So if this whole thing from A to D is 33 yards, the whole thing then from E to H is 33 yards because they're congruent. My question, what can we conclude maybe about AB? What's the length of it? Mm, well, oh, I got it. If we know, and we do, that this entire segment is trisected, that means three equal parts. So therefore, if I took 33, here we go, and divided it by three equal parts, because I have a bigger thing that I'm now breaking up into three equal parts, division, that would mean that this is 11 yards, this is 11 yards, this is 11 yards. Oh, same thing down here. Since I know I started with bigger things congruent, then they're like divisions. Divide this by 3 because it's trisected. So this would be 11, this would be 11, this would be 11. So, man, I can conclude a ton of stuff here. I can conclude that CD, here's one, CD, that segment, is congruent to, I don't know, EF. I can conclude that. I can conclude a bunch of stuff. In fact, I can conclude, like, Point C is the midpoint, which could have happened before that. But <laughs> I mean, I could conclude all kinds of stuff. But at least I know they're like divisions. The small little pieces are congruent. Same thing actually applies with the angles. So same thing here, except again, I changed the actual given information. You see now, I said that this entire angle is congruent to this entire angle, MRK. Well, let's say that, I don't know, that they're 150 degrees. So let's say that this is 150 degrees, the whole entire thing. Well, if I know that I have ray ra, ray ra 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 ra, bisecting the bigger angle, and at the same time I have ray ho ho ho, green giant, bisecting that big angle, I'm going to use green just because I said that. <laughs> that means my like divisions, if I divided that one too because it's bisected, divided that in two because it's bisected, that would make this 75 degrees, and this 75 degrees, and this 75 degrees, and this 75 degrees. So if I start with something bigger that's congruent, then they're like divisions, then they're like divisions would also be congruent as well. That's a great example right there of division property. So let's go back to the foldable and actually write down the division properties and we will be D-U-N, that spells done. So on to the foldable with the division property, here we go. So there's the multiplication property and what needs to go in the division property flap is this theorem number 15, which says if segments or angles are congruent. So we're starting with bigger things congruent, like the 150 degree angle or the 33 yard segment. We can divide those and chop those up into equal pieces and those little individual pieces that we're chopping up, their divisions are congruent. That's exactly what the property says, aka, excuse me, theorem 15. So those two things right there, we're going to use those bad boys and again multiplication means we're getting bigger, Division means we're getting smaller, but there is something that needs to be taken care of, and you need to write this down in the foldable too. This is enormous, enormous, enormous 
to help you know when you're going to use the multiplication or division property. This is huge. You need to star this, highlight it, circle it, and here's your absolute first indicator. And you'll see these in, in class. But you need to look for the double use of the words midpoint, bisect, or trisect. If you see the double use, doesn't always mean it's written twice, careful with that, but if it's being used in two different places in the picture, then you need to immediately think, ooh, I should be thinking multiplication or division. But which one do I use then if I see midpoint twice, or bisect twice, or trisect twice? Well, then you do this. Then you say, if I'm actually, sorry, if I'm actually going to use the multiplication property, as it's coming up here, then what I'm actually have given to me, I'll just stop working up on it. <laughs> you use the multiplication property then, when segments or angles in the actual conclusion are bigger than what's given to you. So whatever you're concluding, whatever the, the proof thing is or the conclusion, if that's bigger than the little pieces that's given to you, then larger is what it's going to be. But only if you got double use of midpoint by subtraction. Because remember, we talked about this with addition and subtraction. Yes, addition is if you're concluding something bigger. Yes, subtraction is if you're concluding something smaller. But it didn't matter whether there's double use of midpoint, bisect, or trisect. So, and the last thing is this. Well, second to last thing. If you're going to use the division property, that is only used then when segments or angles in the actual conclusion are smaller, smaller, smaller than those given. Awesome. But here, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the most important things. The key thing, my goodness, the key thing, the key thing is double use. If you don't see double use in midpoint, bisect, trisect, then multiplication or division doesn't even apply. Okay? Proud of you guys. Rock and roll. We'll see you in class and we'll practice these bad boys later.